Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you guys are watching this video. Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing? We have some cool stuff for you guys today. So hopefully we're going to be finishing the install on this and that. Guess what? The drive shaft is finally back and it has the right yoke on it. So check it out. This guy is way bigger than the other guy and I already went ahead and test fitted it and made sure um, that it fits in the transmission. And it is definitely the right one. I don't think that they had to redo this. Uh, I know they just changed this out. So I think they may have been able to send a yoke. They said they had to change this, I believe. But uh, to me, it doesn't look like it. This looks identical. It's back and it has been rebalanced. I think they did change um, the weights on it because I think there was a weight right here that they took off. And there's a new one there. So, and it has a sticker on it now from, uh, what is it, ArizonaDriveShaft.com, so yeah. So it's back guys, so I want to be able to get the transmission in. Now, what I was going to do was just extend the wires for the transmission to fit the vehicle speed sensor and the uh, reverse lockout solenoid. But what I think we're going to go ahead and do instead is buy uh, the new pigtails for it. And the reason that is, is because... If I extend it with a piece of wire, I'm going to have two connections per wire and I'd rather have a single connection. Um, plus the pigtails will be new and uh, yeah, and it'll just simplify it a little bit by doing that. They have one in town. It's like 18 bucks or something like that. Yeah. Speed sensor solenoid though, or speed sensor in general, they're very, not picky, but it's better to have a good connection or the least amount of connections possible when doing one of those types of, you know, sensors because the reverse lockout just needs a power and a ground really is it. The other one actually sends a signal through the wire so it's better if your wire has a very good connection and less of them so it's a cleaner signal. So let's go ahead and do a little checklist of what we got to do guys. We're going to break the lower pulley loose which we can do one of two ways either using my, I brought it home, I have a, uh, a flywheel holder tool. That's what this guy is, the snap on guy. So I can use it to hold the flywheel and break that loose but we got to break that guy loose we also have to install the new flywheel the new clutch install the transmission that's five things so far we got to remove the booster pump and fix the wiring for that that's six seven's going to be install the lower again reinstall the blower so seven things now or eight things i mean sorry um and then after that we got to pull the alternator and put a new pulley on it or the three and a half inch pulley that we had on it back on and also have to reinstall the new or the old lower, whatever you want to say, the Metco lower and its bracket and all that since we put the factory lower back on. All that being said, it's quite a bit of work. We're going to tackle it one job at a time. I think first we're going to start with, and I've wanted to do this uh, for a little bit now, which is we're going to break in that guy right there. If you guys see it, that is a brand new Hacko soldering iron and I haven't even used it yet. So we're gonna go ahead and take the booster pump out of the trunk, solder those wires back together. I may have to put a little piece of wire in there to uh, extend the gap there so it's not stretching because it's like four wires and if one's short and you connect it, the other ones are gonna be kind of wavy. So we may just put a little piece of wire to keep them the same length and clean that up. But let's go ahead and jump onto that. guys so there you can see we have the setup if you look all it has is a simple ground here that's it we got a ground this guy which is our original power feed into the booster pump here and then out of the booster pump into the FPDM then it comes out of the FPDM down into the fuel pump here's what we got to do we got to take this wire and this wire and we got to reconnect them back together so 
we're gonna undo those beautiful butt connectors there, the heat shrink butt connectors, and that way we can put this loom back over it and tape it up and make it look nice and not be worried about it. And I also may fix and replace this connector here because this is another one. Um, as you guys can see, that's another butt connector there, so. It's soldered together pretty nicely, looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. It's not the greatest, but uh, it definitely works. Boom, there it is, guys. Everything's done. It's gone. It's get out of here time. See you later. Looking good. Now all we gotta do is make sure it works, but we got some other stuff to do before that. I'm not worried about that. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. So we're pretty much done in here. We can put all our tools from here away, get them out of there. And uh, next is gonna be guys, dun, dun, dun. we gotta put this bad boy in. This guy's gotta go in and on and all that good fun stuff. So let's get to that. Oh, hello, Mr. Kitty. Is it time to install the clutch and transmission? So there we go guys, the flywheel's in, it looks good, but one thing we do need to do to it, my neck hurts, that's so why I'm laying down, you know what I mean, you do this, your neck hurts, my battery's dying, my neck hurts, everything's going to crap, man, but in all seriousness, what we're going to do guys, we're going to go ahead and actually uh, brake clean this flywheel, because you can see my beautiful fingerprints, and also from the factory, usually on clutches and flywheels, they'll spray uh, or wipe them down with an oil to prevent them from rusting otherwise these guys will rust and look like uh you know a used part so we need to blow that oil off with some brake clean that way when our clutch goes on it's not on an oily 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 surface all right guys so i haven't cleaned this off yet but what i am going to do is i'm going to put this guy like this on there to hold the flywheel put my bar out which usually goes you know across here from here all the way across over to there so I just put it out so this handle is going to butt up against it. And what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to spin. You can see I have my half inch in there. We're going to try and break the front crank pulley bolt loose using this guy on the flywheel. Now that we got some leverage on the flywheel like that. And you can see my things are in the teeth really well and nice. So we're going to give that a shot right now. See if we can get that guy to break loose. And yeah. So I'm going to set you guys up over here. Because I have a feeling the fun action is going to be watching this thing maybe try and do something. I don't know. Shouldn't be an idiot like me and get it backwards. So here we go. Oh, man. I was really hoping it wouldn't be that tight. Boy, oh boy, is she tight. I've never done this before, but... I hope it'll work. I don't know, guys. You guys tell me what you think. Is this going to work? Let me go turn that light off in the background. Well, 
I don't think that's uh, usable. At least I guess it just broke the head. Usually it breaks the socket. <laughs> but. <laughs> Guys, check that out. It actually broke the head off the ratchet, which is kind of funny. There goes that. Usually, like I said, it'll usually break this actual socket. Like this guy. So I'm kind of uh, shocked that he's still in one piece. But uh, Cobalt Zero Cobra Lower Pulley 1. Well, that's pretty crazy, guys. I've yet to break a ratchet like that. Luckily, that's a cheap one. Um... Nonetheless, I do have another half inch ratchet, but it's in my toolbox. It's a snap on half inch. I've done it. I used it. That's what I used to break it loose originally. And actually we had the car with the transmission in everything like that. I had it on a lift and I had my snap on half inch ratchet in it with a socket. I think that same socket actually, to be honest. And, uh, we had it in there with the ratchet and then we had Basically one of these the other style jack handles that are just open on the end of it and had a ton of leverage on that thing and uh, It actually broke loose that way So what I may try this next time too is maybe put a little heat on it and then try and break it free um, Sometimes that helps if you heat the outside, but it's hard because that goes through and it's to, The thing you need to heat is really far back So it's kind of pointless because what happens is you end up heating that you know both things simultaneously and what, what when you heat something what you're trying to do is heat the piece the bolt is in to get it to expand that way your bolt stays small and it expands which loosens the threads and it'll come out but nonetheless sometimes heating stuff will shock it free too if it's stuck and you heat it really hot it'll kind of you know what i mean like break it free um and it also works for things that are loctited because it basically melts the loctite out of it so anyways we're gonna have to wait on that obviously because i can't do anything about that now that thing's straight broken so it broke the head and I can't fix that so we're just gonna go ahead and clean the drive or clean the uh, flywheel up and get the clutch on and let's get the tranny in also before everybody in the comments starts going crazy going oh my god what did you do you're tightening it no wonder you broke it actually on these guys it's reverse thread and the reason is the motor spins this way so if the motor spins this way and your piece is spinning in that way well what happens is the motor will spin that way and spin that piece out so it's reverse thread, that way when the motor spins it tightens it. And that's part of the reason why these guys get so freaking tight to begin with is because that, they get tightened constantly. Every time you make a hit, you stab it, it constantly starts tightening it a little more and a little more. So what I'm going to do is probably, like I said, replace this. I'll get my snap on one. Um, we may end up doing the same thing and guys usually do that and then they say that they'll get the uh, pry bar and get it and whack it on the head to get it to spin free and loosen. And today guys, on Chad's Educational, we're using a Molly Grease. The beauty of a Molly Grease is most of them are like kind of a dark gray, black like that. They are, and you can see that right there on my fingers, a dark gray. Mollies are really good for metal on metal contact. So the beauty of mollies and this type of grease is that a molly has the ability to kind of bond with metal or stick to it. So when you use a molly on a metal and, and it's made specific for metal on metal, the beauty of molly is you put it on there and even if I put it on here and I wiped it away, it would still have some on the surface and I'll make it slicker basically. So it's kind of like you see dry lubricants, you spray them on and wipe them and you don't physically see them, but you can feel it slick. It's kind of like car wax, right? You wax your car and you can't see the wax, but when you see, you know, you feel it or you see the water run off of it, Molly essentially does the same thing for metal on metal. So that way it prevents metal and metal contact from actually gouging one another and making grooves. So it's really good for that. Okay, our clutch, we got a bottom, we got a flywheel side, so we know that goes to the flywheel. Okay, so I just took this apart. I got my bolts over here, which are going to bolt this guy, which are going to bolt this to the flywheel up there. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the instructions real quick and just make sure we're doing everything right. Here's a fun fact too, guys. Most people are like, oh yeah, 500, as you see right here, drive the car for about 500 miles. Or in parentheses 1200 clutch cycles so a clutch cycle is the clutch going in and coming out and to be honest the most important part of this 
isn't it, mileage will do nothing if you're in six gear on the freeway and the clutch is locked up it's going to do nothing to be honest they should x nay this out of there but they do say for 500 city miles which is a big difference between highway so in the city is stop and go stop and go which means lots of engagements um or 1200 clutch cycles because people see 500 miles they ignore the city and they just think oh yeah driving it is what does it every time you push on these fingers you're literally loosening these clutches in between here and giving these clutches allowing them to slip a little bit and that slippage is what is actually breaking in the clutch so this guy will spin and as it spins and slips on this disc it starts wearing these pads into its bottom plate down here breaking it in and making it all find a home that way Everybody's kind of broken in and leveled off to the metal should be nice and happy That way you have the most surface area and you're gonna have the best grip and be able to hold the most power And this time guys, I'm putting the big paint mark right in front of my big dumb face But my big dumb face also forgot to get a socket for these bolts Cause it's a big dumb face Okay, there we go guys. We got the uh, this guy on and torqued. We got our next plate on, so let's go ahead and get the actual pressure plate on. And this time we're gonna line up this big fat paint mark. Okay guys, I wanna show you something. This is something that uh, I don't know if you guys can see. This, you can pick it up. You can move it around in here. So what happens when you move it around in here is you can change your input shaft on getting it in and making it more difficult. So what I like to do is kind of go all the way up, all the way down, all the way left, all the way right, kind of feel it out. And then basically just put it right in its home of the what would be the center. And I feel like if you do that, you're usually pretty good. And then I take my gun and then I'll run this down lightly. Cause as soon as you start to run that guy down, it's gonna actually put pressure. Like as we were talking about these fingers going down and in, when we run it down all the way, these fingers are gonna go past this guy. So now that it's like that, it can't move anywhere. And I just do that initially for the first two across each other, just to snug it and hold this guy in his home. And then from there, we'll go around and get the rest of these. But I don't know if I want to bore you guys with that, so I'll come back when this is all done and tightened up and blah, 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 blah. So check it out guys, remember McLeod was talking about that the springs needed to be drawn in lower than this plate. And if it's not, you got a problem, we'll check that out, look at that. You can see the spring is lower than that plate as you come in. Whoop. It looks pretty good, everything's good, our paint marks are paint marked, yay! Now it's time to put the bell housing on, but I think I'm going to save you guys the boring part of just putting a bell housing on. I mean, comment down below if you guys want to see all the stuff A to B. Uh, because I'm always curious. I don't know if people get bored of seeing it or if, you know, new people join and they want to see it. I know people that are new always want to see new stuff. Um, I've done this before. But, yeah, if you guys want to see it, let me know. Comment down below because I love showing it. And if you guys like seeing it, I'll absolutely keep putting it in videos. I just don't like videos to be 30 minutes long and full of, you know, a bunch of stuff. Or I'll make multiple videos out of one thing because, you know, that's what actually most YouTubers do that do little stuff like this i look and see what a lot of car youtubers do when they do their stuff and a lot of them seem to break big stuff like this up into like two to three days so uh you know i do a lot of stuff in a day compared to most i feel like um and i like to show that but i also don't want to make long videos so let me know down below what you guys think if you want it i'll do it if not we won't we'll just skip it and i'll just you know show you what it looks like when it's done as I'm sitting here editing this video, we're already at 20 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and call it there. We're going to split this up into two parts. I was really trying, like I said here, you know, I don't like to make long videos. This video is long because I feel like we have a lot of stuff, um, and I filmed a lot of it for, 
you guys just so you can see it and I kind of want to get your guys' opinion like I talked about and uh, see what you want and so if you guys want to see it let me know down below and in the next video that I edit I'll make it very very detailed and go over you know most of most everything we did but if you're new to this channel feel free to subscribe also if you like this video give it a big fat thumbs up and it helps me out and I appreciate it so thank you guys for watching as always stay productive work on your own cards if you like to work on your own cards and figure it out and have fun doing it and uh, it's time for you guys to get the heck out of here.